I would like to start with a really brief uh, introduction of my research group, which is uh, all these people that you can see here. It is SIDS uh, UBC. And, and yeah, basically we've been running for uh, 20 years. I was not there at that time, but uh, yeah, they've been uh, doing really nice work. Uh, and we are about, uh, you know, all these people that you can see here, around 60 people combining academics, engineers, uh, all of them uh, working in the, um, in the field of, of, of power electronics and power systems, combining different applications. So for example, mechatronics, uh, combining you know uh, energy uh, at different levels and I'm not going to go that deep because you know my my presentation is clearly uh, touching all the research points that we are doing at the center so let me let me go a bit next all right so and thanks Michael for the uh, really nice introduction because I've been able to uh, well uh, I would say it, it's really aligned to what I was going to say so um, you know, our view is that we are basically introducing really a lot of elements, new elements to the system. All the all these are just an example that you can see here in the left, like uh, power electronics, uh, PV, you know, HVDC uh, for in offshore integrations, for instance. Uh, plenty of of these um, uh, you know devices. The the common factor of all of them, as as Michael said, is that they are a power electronic interface, and this is something interesting. Oh, sorry. Oh. Um, these are all, all of them are power electronic interface. And this is um, something that, uh, you know, as we discussed previously, it is, you know, it has to deal, uh, you know, it, it has to change the way that we are designing, planning, engineering, and operating and controlling our power system. Okay. And our research, it is kind of combining the, the first part, uh, the, the, the devices uh, at the power electronics level, and also you know, the, the power system so that uh, we are trying to, to, to link these two worlds in, into one. Okay, well, let's go a bit uh, next. Um, this is just uh, another drawing that I wanted to, to do and it's similar to what Michael said. So I'm glad to see that we are sharing some, some views. Perhaps mine is a bit narrower. So here you can see all the research lines that we are covering in our uh, group. For example, uh, wind power, power plant controllers for wind, also solar PV, uh, then we have been looking at, uh, you know, how to control HVDC and then moving at the DC networks as well. Uh, also fax devices, how they can support the network to maintain all these, you know, massive integration of renewables that we are uh, working with. So this is kind of a simple drawing, trying to gather all the topics that I'm going to, to detail next. And, and well, basically, you know, let's start uh, here. And I would like to start at the device level and then start moving to the power system. So from, from the devices to the uh, to the big system in eight different research areas, trying to combine a bit, giving you a glimpse of what we're doing at, at CITSEA. Uh, the first one is, is uh, again, thanks Michael for the presentation. So modular multi-level converters, and I already see a good alignment between us there. So, uh, you know, uh, it is uh, one of the workhorse of, of industry for, we can even say classic now for HVDC. And, you know, it, it's been used for offshore wind uh, transmission for all these renewable HVDC corridors uh, that are being built. And basically, you know, uh, this modularity that it has, these submodules enables us to operate between high voltage HVAC and high voltage HVDC transmitting a real high amount of power. And the research that we have been doing here has been, you know, mainly on the control at the control level. So we have started, you know, understanding the converter, trying to see the different degrees of freedom that it has, uh, trying to work, uh, for example, when, when we are working in voltage, you know, uh, fault conditions, trying to design controls that are able to maintain the, the converter running in a, in a constant and, and, and in, a, in a steady manner, in a stable manner. And also trying to explore some new uh, possibilities, having all these degrees of freedom, Opens the, opens the box to, to start uh, studying some you know, optimal ways of controlling the converter, as you can see here in the, in the right. And also, you know, so, some even some more ambitious uh, uh, research to, to calculate even these references for currents and so on inside the converter in real time, trying to be as optimal as possible. Also this converter, uh, when we are talking about ACDC network, it, it has some advantages. And that it has a, even even it is not huge, it has some some uh, little bit of energy inside that could be potentially used for some uh, for some services or at least it can be used kind of a, as a firewall in some cases uh, for for the network. So this is another research uh, point that we are trying to 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 understand how this can convert can contribute to the stability of interconnecting ACDC networks. Then moving on. 
Um, in this uh, big drawing that I was showing you, let's move to the to the DC network a bit. And and here I just wanted to show you an example from uh, you know our colleagues from PSC that was showing all these you know uh, in the North Sea all these interconnections that you can see here uh, are basically HVDC connections. And the issue is that we see different uh, you know manufacturers, different technologies. We we have been discussing MMC, which is BSC technology, but there is also LCC. And you know, seeing all this, it is clearly that at some point, all these links, there is no interconnection between them after now, but it is very likely that it's gonna happen. And for that, we, what we have been working on is to design new converters, DCDC converters to interconnect different networks. For example, in the top graph, you can see a connection between BSC uh, link one and BSC link two, or in the lower one in a, between an LCC one and a BSC, which might be a bit more challenging because we might need to adapt this different technology. And this is something that we have been conducting at the power electronics device level. So here you can see, for example, some examples on the, you know, uh, some, some real power electronics devices that we have built and tested to, to understand like how they were behaving. But uh, in, in terms of, let's say from simulations on the big network to a proof of concept in our laboratory. And also recently we have been moving to a more uh, we can say multi-level approaches so that we know that these, guy, these guys uh, will, will work in a in an, HVD, in an HVDC environment, so we should see how they uh, should should uh, should be expanded. So we cannot limit ourselves to a two-level converter. We should go for a, an HVDC multi-level approach, and this is what we are doing right now. Then there are some other uh, at the device level of other elements that we are looking at, and we have started recently a collaboration with uh, with RTE, looking at, for example, uh, multi-port converters, trying to uh, tap part of these HVDC converters that are interconnecting HVAC and HVDC networks, trying to extract a medium voltage DC connection, which would enable us to, for example, interconnect uh, renewable energy power plants in DC or uh, you know, even hydrogen electrolyzers and so on. So this is a new interesting uh, topology that we're working on that would enable us like, to have a multi-port converter in the network with uh, advanced uh, capabilities in terms of you know, uh, giving the network a bit more flexibility and, and, and you know, this, this increased uh, capabilities for uh, you know, uh, exchanging power in, in, in these hubs. All right, and then uh, going a bit more, let's say on the, on the DC part, uh, let's go a, a bit on the looking at a wider level. If we imagine the future DC network in this you know, big hub that I was showing you before, if we start interconnecting all this, you perhaps know the, I'm sure that most of you know that uh, what it's called the, 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 the typical converters that are uh, AC fax. These AC fax are basically devices that we're installing in the AC network to balance the network and to make this network to, to, to operate in a stable manner, to avoid congestions and so on. The idea that we have been working during the last years was to do the same, but in a future DC network. And although this is quite futuristic, I would say, you know, they, it has risen some interest from, from industry because they are already anticipating some potential mesh grids. Actually, there are uh, some of these uh, networks that are being built, for example, in China. And, you know, these devices, which are we, in, in this case, we're calling that uh, current flow controller, would enable us to be like DC fax, let's say, uh, basically trying to avoid congestions, to manage, for example, damp oscillations. And it has some interesting capabilities for the DC network that can enable us to operate this, uh, this DC uh, network in a reliable manner. Then uh, let's go a bit forward and, and sorry for being that fast, but I would like to show you many of the things that we are uh, doing and I, I, I wanted to compact them in a short presentation. Uh, but if we look at this big network, for example, then a clear answer for us was, okay, what is happening with the dynamics? How can we ensure that all this is stable and that you know, we can integrate all this offshore renewable power in a safe and secure manner. And the, the idea that we were working uh, with here is to design in this red part here to, to develop uh, you know, dynamic, uh, uh, I would say controllers, optimal controllers to uh, operate this, this network in, within the, 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 the network limitations. So for example, here we have been looking at Group control design. We have been looking at, at optimal control design to combine and, and, and design all these uh, converted controllers to maintain the voltage of the DC network in, within the limits uh, and on also the current of the DC network within the limits, enabling this power transfer in a, in a safe and secure uh, manner. Also, for example, involving MMCs, involving CFCs, and all the different little elements that we were discussing before, uh, we have been trying to put them here and trying to see how this future network could be operated in a in a safe and secure manner as well. 
And then let's move a bit uh, on the other edge, uh, on the AC side. And, and here we have been looking at, for example, what we call interactions uh, in, in, in power system with large penetration of power electronics. And, and, and well, we, we, we started looking at uh, thinking, okay, what is happening in the DC side, you know, might be happening also in the AC side with plenty of, of, of HVDC devices. Uh, we have cables, we have fax devices, plenty of power electronics. How they could interact. No? So we have started looking at, for example, interaction between HVDC and wind. Also looking at, for example, some real events that has happened in, in our uh, Spain-France link. For example, this is a harmonic interaction real scenario that happened. So here you can see the converter oscillating at 1.7 kilohertz, which was something that had not uh, been, been seen before in, in our network. So it is something that was quite scary, actually. Uh, so this is some, some of the things that we are trying to develop some new methodologies, new, uh, you know, techniques to uh, try to analyze this, uh, this type of events and to try to give the operator and also manufacturers the tools so that they can, you know, uh, try to uh, operate this, uh, this, this uh, or design even the network in a, and the converters in a, in a reliable manner to ant anticipate in this kind of interactions. Then going a bit uh, forward, uh, let's look at what's happening. We, we started thinking, okay, but uh, then the, the network is changing heavily, especially if we, for example, have this map and, and we start introducing more renewable energy. No? For example, if we go from this scenario with conventional generation looking here at the island and we start substituting this generation by PV, then you know something that happens clearly is that we are reducing the inertia. So our inertia might might cause this, uh, you know, large transient transients in in in, uh, in the in the network frequency, among other problems. And we started looking at where could be this limitation. Uh, where where is the limit of this type of networks when we are in, introducing many 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 renewables and power electronic interface devices? Where is the limit of, of the stability? And this is what we were looking for. And especially, uh, you know, trying to find this limitation where we could start working with, for example, new type of controllers. And these type of controllers were, for example, this uh, grid following, which is the classic, and this grid forming, which is uh, like the new uh, new brand, I would say, controller that uh, you know everyone is talking now. And and yeah, basically here, um, there is there is one one point, interesting point, is that how we can select this role of these different converters to enable the stability, you know, selecting some of them to operate in grid forming mode and the others, for example, to keep them in, in grid forming mode. So how, how to do this? It, it's something interesting and it is something that we are uh, looking at uh, today, okay? And then even something that we're going beyond, and I think that this is really aligned with what I was saying, is that what happens, is it possible to basically transfer everything to a grid, uh, grid forming whenever we are looking at a full network uh, based on power electronics 100% with no synchronous generation, how this should be operating? Um, well, this is a question that we are looking at and this is just a challenge that, that I wanted to show with this uh, little drawing. And then looking at uh, changing a bit the topic, keeping ourselves in the AC network, but looking more at the renewable sector, we have been working you know, with uh, power plant control de designers, with wind manufacturers as well, trying to develop and to control the, these uh, renewable power plants. And something that we have been uh, started looking at is that, uh, okay, how this could be blended in what we call dynamic virtual power plants. And we have started a recent project called Positive, where we are trying to understand how the you know, behavior from, for example, a blended response uh, from a PV and a wind power plant could be merged in a way that we can, uh, you know, um, respond in a more, uh, I would say, appropriate way. And this is not only to, to balance, you know, deviations in the generation, it is to basically even open new services to the network, even black starting from, from uh, PV and wind and so on, but trying to combine different natures of, of power plants because all of them have different characteristics. So, you know, a PV power plant is, is, is different from, even though they are power electronic interface, they are different from wind power plants and so on. No? So how to do this and how this can impact the network and which type of new services we can provide, that is something that, uh, you know, we are, have started uh, recently working on and, and it is uh, definitely of, of interest. And uh, one of the last topics that we wanted to bring into the table and also Michael uh, said that is that uh, and we have started recently also, uh, you know, pushing in this direction is uh, what happens or how can we, for example, or which role can play storage uh, when we embed that into the HVDC controllers or into the, for example, uh, well, HVDC controllers, not converters, sorry, 
and into the uh, fax uh, devices. No? Uh, is it possible that depending on the, you know, and this is something that we are looking at this uh, topic in the SIGDE working group, uh, um, how we can, for example, uh, you know, support the network from these uh, two uh, power electronics devices, incorporating storage, so that we can provide uh, these, these services to the network to maintain the stability in a really, really renewable power-based uh, network. So, for example, one example is that we are looking at is to add uh, supercapacitors to, for example, one of these fax devices to enable, uh, you know, an adequate uh, response uh, during, for example, some events. And that is my last slide. Uh, just to summarize uh, a bit all this, and I hope that I'm on time. But uh, my main conclusion is that we would be pleased to, you know, collaborate with you in any of these uh, different topics. And I just wanted to do like a graphic conclusion showing all the things that I was uh, discussing before. Okay. So, well, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And if you have any questions, I would be very pleased to answer them. Thank you.